Narium is a very weird satisfaction. There's no unique gameplay mechanics as you're just jumping around in an arena, doing objectives while dodging obstacles. Yet I was having fun despite how basic this sounds. The story centers around a kid named Willy, who gets kidnapped by a twisted circus master, forced to partake in a brutally violent show. The further you progress, the more you see Willy think less of his home and more of a deadly revenge. The narrative is kept simple, but you are given a decent antagonist, who might not have anything to write home about, but at the very least can sell some solid conviction. This is, of course, an excuse to get you into performing tasks across three steam punk circus arenas while avoiding a strong variety of death traps. Yet, this simple story manages to heighten the action with fun context. In the game's campaign, you have Ten. stages to complete in order to move on to the next ten. Each stage begins with some strong writing from the evil circus master, followed by a task involving collecting an X amount of barrels or following a specific rhythm, sometimes with a time limit. While this goes on, one to multiple traps appear on screen to make any seamlessly simple task to be extremely difficult. Yet, I embrace the challenges this game throws at me. Within each couple of rounds, the stage will swap its traps around to try to throw you off balance. The stages will even change form to suit the personality of specific traps and give you a threat. You will die a lot, and that will either frustrate the heck out of you or encourage you to get better. I felt like each stage was a puzzle I really wanted to solve, and every time I failed, I kept trying to find new ways to troubleshoot until I've done so. When I finished a level, I felt triumph and some sort of strange satisfaction running down my fat circus performer veins. The game automatically saves after every cleared stage, and the game will last you around from 7 to 10 hours, depending on how fast you can get through these dangerous scenarios. The other components to Panarium are significantly weaker. You have an arcade mode where you must collect as many coins as you possibly can from breaking barrels. There's a leaderboard as to how long you have survived and how many coins you collect in each run. These coins can be spent on passive perks to give you an upper hand hand on your future runs. As cool as this sounds, the variety in stages and the objectives are non-existent, making the experience a little tiresome if played for more than a few short bursts. Where this game falls flat is the local-only multiplayer. When I played this game at South by Southwest Gaming last year, I was concerned a bit for the final product after from what I seen was incredibly underwhelming. Thankfully, the rest of the package exceeds my expectations, but the multiplayer does not. You've got a cooperative and competitive mode that both rely on the same thing, holding down on an X number of buttons, except with the option of working either with or against another player. All the issues from arcade mode carry over here, but also without any perk system to give more replay value. To top it all off, Anarium just isn't fun with another player, as it's much slower and limited than the rest of the game. I would have loved if the multiplayer had been removed to strengthen the arcade mode, or to give more campaign missions, but it is thankfully the smallest portion of the game. The music and sounds are phenomenal with its orchestrated circus tunes and daunting trap effects, but they don't quite complement the 8-bit retro art style, although this is just a minor gripe. If any higher than 999 or your regional equipment, Panarium would just be enjoyable, but for the given price, it's a good hardcore platformer, thanks to its creative theme, design, and effective simplicity.